Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the good shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls each, us, each of us by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who is sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There, else, there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Be Let us read Psalm 23, which is printed in your worship program. We will read the psalm responsively by whole verse. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He begins to lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the first letter of John. We know love by this that he did lay down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this, we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. When you hear somebody talk about the Good Shepherd, what are the images that pop into your mind? I think I heard someone say sheep behind me. <laughs> Anything else? You'll have to kind of shout out if you are willing to answer in public. The picture of Jesus carrying the sheep. Jesus carrying the sheep, yes. There's that image with Jesus with the lamb on his shoulders or in his arms, right? The mental, like many of you, the mental pictures that come to me with the words good shepherd are overwhelmingly stained glass images. Not just the one in our chapel down the hall, but many stained glass images which are beautiful and calm and probably have very little to do with actual sheep or with working shepherds or with what Jesus was trying to talk to a mixed group of disciples and Pharisees about so many years ago. I know that I get kind of oversaturated with the ways the church has used images of sheep and shepherds for calm peacefulness in the past few hundred years at least. So to get out of my head a little bit this week, I pinged a few friends outside of the church and asked them to talk to me about their imagery, their reactions to the term Good Shepherd. After I had had a couple of conversations about good dogs, <laughs> there are a lot of kinds of shepherd dogs, and there's a lot of very specifically developed skill in that role. But after we had talked a bit about the good dogs that many of my friends know, I noticed a couple of my other friends were commenting on a sense of discomfort with just how much control we, if we are the sheep, are supposed to be giving to a shepherd. My friends, like many of you and like myself, are quite familiar with examples of bad leadership and guardianship in government, in work, in school, in religious life. We, many of us, are just as familiar with examples of bad shepherdship as any of Jesus' hearers could have been 2,000 years ago when Jesus first had this conversation. And these experiences of bad shepherdship tend to make us, especially independent American adults, make us naturally pretty uncomfortable with the idea that we are invited to give ourselves over to a shepherd, even what should be the model of shepherding, the best possible shepherd. That trade-off of 
letting somebody else make all the decisions about where we go and when we go in return for protection from wolves and sheep nappers, that trade-off actually feels very risky for many of us. Because being shepherded is, in fact, for the most part, about having someone else decide and guide for you. Somebody else, not me, plan where I go in a group, never alone. Somebody else decide how I will go and when we will go there. It's mostly metaphorically going somewhere, but sometimes, in fact, offering to someone else the decision-making power over physically where I go and when. There are certainly times in my life when I think about how I would really like to stop making decisions and have someone else be responsible for stuff for a while. But at the same time, I know perfectly well that if I think about it for a second, I don't like the idea of getting myself redirected by a bossy sheepdog who thinks I should not go munch that very tasty, list, tasty looking cliffside bush a bossy sheepdog who thinks that perhaps I should not be taking my preferred shortcut through the store or going down that intriguing internet rabbit hole. I have also, from time to time, been heard to complain that I didn't get to vote on which path we are taking to those greener pastures that both the government and the Bible have frequently promised me. That just me, or does it seem familiar to any of you? Oh, I got some nods there. Even in those seasons of my life, when I am very wary of the wolves and the dangers that lurk in the unexplored, or really even the familiar parts of my world, even in those days and times when I really want the confidence of protection and generous care that we hear about, in the 23rd Psalm, which we read today, even in those moments when I want what the shepherd offers, I also get anxious about the trade-offs of letting anyone else, even the best possible shepherd, make decisions for me. And as I thought about that, I noticed this week that God is pretty clear that we do not get to just pick one of those things, the nice protection, without the other thing, the serious direction. In what we read today, neither Jesus nor the psalmist is shy about suggesting that the shepherd makes decisions for us. The shepherd takes actions that the sheep do not vote on. There are going to be other sheep that we don't know joining us. Nobody asked if we wanted them. We will, in fact, be walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And even that reference to goodness and mercy, it turns out that in the original Hebrew text, the goodness and mercy are actively chasing us, pursuing us, not just pleasantly and passively following along after us until we're ready for goodness and mercy. That ongoing conversation about shepherding laced through all of scripture, this idea of God as our shepherd really is not just a metaphor for generous divine protection and care. It is that. It is, in fact, a promise of God's care. But this conversation about God as our shepherd is also an invitation to, maybe even it is a strong, heel-nipping suggestion that we belong to something, someone, that we do not control. And Jesus and the psalmist are telling us that's a very good thing. I think, actually, I know that there are indeed truths about how the world is better, our world in general, my world in particular, the world is better when I yield control to God. But my gut and my anxiety and my independence are often a lot louder in my day-to-day -day practical decision-making 
than my spiritual knowledge is. Is that just me, or is that anyone else? I have found that the only thing that is stronger than my anxious independence is my relationships, is trust that comes not from titles or authority or majority votes or doing my research, but trust that comes from long mutual relationships built on shared experience. Relationships that have been through a few downs with the ups, and often relationships that have been through a round or more of helpless laughter. And it turns out that that, relation, that kind of relationship may be exactly what the psalmist and Jesus are talking to us about. Several commentators pointed out that the center point of the psalm, the center word in the original Hebrew of the 23rd Psalm, the balance point around which that poem rotates, the center of the psalm is the word you. Specifically, you are with me. With me in the valley of the shadow of death. You are with me in the worst experience I could have in the things I am most deeply afraid of. And I think the psalm is rotating around the truth. Not that I won't, we needn't fear then because we have a protector, but rather that I do not fear because you are there. Because you, a particular you, personally are with me. I know that most of us have some things we only put up with because we like the person we are with in them. We watch movies that we would never choose to watch for ourselves. We spend time with people we would be perfectly happy never to see again, thank you. Because of the person we want to be with in those hours. And many of us have a story of something that we have survived. Illness, accident, a crisis at work or at home. Things that I, we have made it through emotionally or physically, specifically because of who it was who went through that with us, of who was there. Many of my friends call those folks their ride or die people. Ride or die are the people who are there for you and who you are there for through anything. The people who will do whatever it takes to be with you and you to be with them to the end. The end of whatever it might be, joyful, challenging, terrifying, ridiculous, or whatever. I think that perhaps the psalmist is really telling us a story not just of good food and protection, but of good relationship. A deep, personal, thick and thin relationship with God that is that long experience of belonging to one another so that we can survive anything because you are with me. I think that when Jesus tells us that he is our shepherd, the good shepherd, as Jesus reminds us that he knows us and we know him, I think that perhaps Jesus is telling us today that we are his ride or die. That Jesus is telling you and me that we are that you who is worth being at the center of Jesus' story. Just as much as we might ever want him to be that you who we put at the center of our story. Now this ride or die with God may not always be a ride we wanted to get on. We are not, in fact, the ones who get to write the whole story. But we get into this story. We find ourselves in the gospel and the psalm because of you. The you, the one who will not lose us, no matter what. 
the one who says to you and to me, I'm here because of you. And the one to whom we can say, in this place, wherever I am led, I have confidence that I am well because you are with me. Amen. Let us proclaim our faith together, saying, We believe in one God. printed in your worship program. In joy and hope, let us pray to receive and share the gifts of life that are given through the risen Christ. May our risen Savior fill us and all God's people with the joy of his glorious and ever-giving resurrection. Let the people say, Amen. May the risen Christ bring peace to earth and wisdom to all who lead the nations, that war, famine, and epidemic may cease. May the pe let the people say, Amen. May all who are isolated, afflicted, persecuted, or living in fear find renewal and strength in the good news of Easter. Let the people say, Amen. May God provide daily bread and abundant life for all those who need food, work, or shelter, and inspire us to serve our neighbors. Let the people say, Amen. May broken hearts be made whole and our communities renewed in the victory of life over death through the risen Christ. Let the people say, Amen. May the light of the risen Christ comfort and strengthen Tashia and all those in the Trinity prayer list and all who are ill, injured, or dying and sustain all who care for the sick and the vulnerable. Let the people say, Amen. May all who have died in the faith of the resurrection be raised with Christ according to his promises. Let the people say, Amen. May Christ send the power of the Holy Spirit upon God's people so that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection day by day. Let the people say, Amen. Almighty God, you have delivered us from the power of sin and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as his death has recalled us to life, so his continual presence in us may raise us to eternal joy through the same Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. My friends, may the peace of Christ be always with you.
morning and thank you for your presence with us this morning. Uh, we're going to dive into one of the pieces of our community life. Uh, once more with feeling this morning, Jeff. Good morning, my friends. My name is Jeff Wojcik, and I apologize for the same story you may have heard a couple weeks ago from me, but just be patient. I'm here today to talk to you about volunteering at, T at Trinity, an important part of our mission. One of the best ways to strengthen our community and connection to others is by volunteering. And volunteering is always a great way to develop new friendships and people with similar interests. I'd just like to give you a brief story about me, which I've told many times already. When Susan and I first came here, it was the church that actually got us into the church. It got us here. And what keeps us here is the people around us. Uh, soon after we arrived, Susan got involved in the choir and has found her a comfortable place up there. I've been a little less outgoing, so I tried to, to, to use volunteering as a way to get to know people. So I started doing some ushering and other things around the church. And as time went on over the years, I've gotten more and more involved in, in volunteering here at, at youth programs and men's breakfast groups and stuff like that. I found out there was some additional benefits for this for me. It gave me a real sense of happiness when I come to church. I'm, I really enjoyed being here. Uh, I get to meet a number of you people and have connections with a number of you people here in the audience. And I have a real sense of fulfillment when I'm here. It really makes me feel uh, happy. And I've had some fun doing it. So I'm hoping that those of you who have volunteered here and have done a number of things here feel the same way that I've felt over the years. So I'm asking you, my friends, to consider getting more involved in volunteering here at Trinity. And we're going to make it a little easy for you, as some of you have already filled out uh, cards here. There are cards in your pews, back of the church in the bell tower, even at the parish hall. Uh, on one side of the ministries that you can look at and get involved in, and then on the other side is all the event help support that we need that's coming. Uh, we have a very active couple of months coming ahead of us. Uh, some immediate needs are going to be the movie night we're going to do on May 17th on Friday night outside. Uh, we're going to do some work at the Morristown Fair uh, with a tent set up there, and obviously our big event, the Blueberry Festival, which uh, we need a number of people to help there. And then we have these new coffee teams that we've recently started that, can, that definitely can use some support. And then recently we've added on, blue, for those who want to get their hands dirty, some uh, blueberry jam making that will happen in the early part of June on the 6th and 7th. Oh, no, in, I think it's in May. Well, okay, well, well the days is in the e-news. It e -news. says in the e-news. <laughs> but yeah, obviously there's a lot going on. There's more to come later in the year uh, to do that. So please fill out the cards. If you're not here and you don't want to fill them out right now, they're online as well. You can go through the e-news and click on the, the, the couple of there and get them as well. Um, so please, if you have any questions about that, you can reach out to me or to anyone on the, on the vestry as well. Uh, I'm happy to report, though, we've had 30 sign-ups already in, in, the, in the speeches we've given over the last couple of weeks, but that, we need many more. I mean, many hands make light work, as you all know. So I thank you for those who've signed up, and I look forward to, to asking any questions you have. It. These documents is, in a, is not a legal contract. You're not bound by blood or, or any legal responsibility for this, but it's, it's to start the conversation to have how you can help here at Trinity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff, and to everybody who is um, already exploring or thinking about new ways to be engaging in the community. This really is a story not just about we want you to sign up and help, but about the strength of our community as a whole. So I'm going to leave announcements at that. Trust you to read the, um, the e-news every week, as I am sure you all do cover to cover. Um, and uh, let us... Uh, let us offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good our vows to the Most High.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high, by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out of the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of blessing, all you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friend, and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, Dying you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, 
in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat the feast. Alleluia! These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May God, the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life, and the blessing of God Almighty, the holy and undivided Trinity, be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.